<laughs> you could go. Hello, everyone. It's Shane Conto, your Wasteland reviewer. Welcome to Wasteland Talks, my weekly show where, honestly, we could talk about whatever the hell we want. And this time, it's not about movies. So that's a first. This time, a special episode because I am a huge baseball fan, and I have the two biggest baseball fans I know, my brother and my friend Dave. And we're going to be talking about the pre, doing a pre-show for the MLB season. And we're representing here, we got two Phillies fans and some random Diamondbacks fan from New Jersey. Um, so there we go. So got my brother Ethan here, who's been on the show before. He's been interviewed a couple of times on Lost in the Wasteland and was on my Goodfellas episode of Welcome to the Wasteland. And we'll be coming on for the Irishman to wrap up my Odyssey of Scorsese which is finally almost over. <laughs> so, <laughs> Ethan, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. And we didn't say the Wasteland Review and Dante Rocha, even though we only have one episode of that. We have two episodes. Ah, we have ah, two, ah. yes. Also, yeah. I forgot. But the yeah. Power Ranger one was... Or which one? Yeah, that was the first one. Yeah, and then we... Oh, shit. Shit, I don't remember. Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon. It's been that a while. An hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> and then Dave is making his debut on the Wasteland Reviewer YouTube channel. Dave, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Shane. And a reminder to those watching the video, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> See, we're professionals here. <laughs> Semi-professionals. I'm going to have, a, have steady growth, so I'm going to go with that. Um, so we're here to talk about baseball, and we're going to be breaking down who we think is going to win each of the six divisions, and then I figured we could throw in who we think is going to be in the World Series and who's actually going to win. I think Ethan already knows who <laughs> my guess is, um, and it destroys me inside. Um, and then we're going to be talking about some of the big moves from the offseason and then even some fun facts. So I think the best place to start, which is probably the most relevant to all three of us, is the National League East, which I don't know how many times they can tell us that the Mets are going to win this because they had a big offseason and then, then they don't. <laughs> so I guess – start with you Ethan who do you think is going to win the NL East this season damn it um who do I think or who do I want (laughs) that's the Um, name of the game isn't it this this is a thing this is the most the Phillies have done in God knows how many years right but mm-hmm. the problem is they did it when the Braves bolstered their lineup, when the Mets bolstered their rotation and their lineup, I, I believe. Damn, Mets. The, Mar- the Marlins are, didn't do anything, and the Nats like, really didn't do all that much. Um, so this is a thing. It looks like it's going to be a three-horse race. <clears throat> and... The only thing I am concerned with, if this is the Phillies are going to win the division, if their aces, <clears throat> Aaron Nola, goes back to his Cy Young run, caliber pitching. Zach Wheeler doesn't break his like fingernail on like pulling up a pair of pants. Um, Zach Eflin comes back strong after his surgery. Um, and uh, what's the dude's name? Dave, guy from Texas. <laughs> oh, Gibson? Oh, uh, Kyle yeah, Gibson. Gibson. If, he's just, if he th- pitches at like a 350 to 3.75 uh, ERA, they'll, be, they'll win the NL East because – I don't really think the Braves – I think that was a one-shot. And the Mets historically in the past, like, decade um, are known for we're going to buy a lot of players, spend $43 million on a pitcher for a year, and 
DeGrom gets hurt, and they only have Scherzer. Oh, so, he will. Yeah. So we'll, <laughs> I don't. I don't think the Mets are going to be as competitive as people think. So after the long way around, I think the Phillies are going to uh, squeak it out. It's not going to. There, there's no one going to be running away with the division. It's not going to be pretty. That lineup's scary. It look it's especially now that they have the DH. They're popping Schwarber there. I'm assuming. And those two, Nick Castellanos and uh, Kyle Schwarber, hit freaking bombs today. So they're gonna love. And then the day the the day before. Castellanos hit a hit a freaking nuke. So Bryce Harper looks like he's in relatively like midseason form. He hits his home runs and hits the ball like 200 miles an hour and strikes out. So he looks like Bryce Harper. So there it's looking go. pretty decent. How about you, Dave? Who do you think is going to take it? Well, I think I'm going to have to follow up with Ethan and go with the Phillies. I know that's easy to say because. We're both fans and biased, of course. <laughs> but they have made some pretty big moves this offseason. Obviously, like you said, we have this couple big signing with Schwarber and Castellanos. I know one of the big concerns some people have is that we're not going to be that great on defense. So we're going to have to score a lot of runs. But, of course, adding the DH helps with that a little bit because that's one guy that you can take off the field and just have him purely for his bat. I think that's also going to help with resting some guys. You see someone like uh, a JT Real Muto who plays every day. If every once in a while you can let him play DH instead and get a little bit of rest, I think that's going to go a long way. And also the Phillies made a few pickups in the bullpen, which mm-hmm. well, let's face it, their bullpen oh, well, <laughs> the last couple of seasons is about <laughs> as bad as it could get. Mm, yeah. Trash. <laughs> so if they could even just get marginally better in the bullpen and in their fielding, I think that's going to make a big difference for them. Yeah, so I I did not plan this. I also said the Phillies are going to win this division because, like, here's the thing. I'm never going to bet on the Mets, like, ever. Like, <laughs> no. I don't care what they do. If they're not in the lead in the last week of the season, I don't believe they're going to win the division. Cause like they're gonna they're gonna lead this division for like four months and then choke, because Degrom's gonna get hurt, they're gonna get discouraged and then it's just done. So that's exactly what's gonna happen. I'm a little concerned about like because you know the Braves got Matt Olson to replace Freddie Freeman, and that was a pretty big pickup for them. But like, I think with the bullpen pickups for the Phillies, because like yeah, their bullpen's been trash, like straight trash. Fun fact, Ian Kennedy went back to the Diamondbacks. <laughs> so there you go. Um, but, like, they picked up Brad Hand. I think that's a big thing. And then they are really taking advantage of the DH now, picking up Schwarber. And I don't think they would have got both those players, obviously, if there wasn't a DH. Because where the hell would you put them in the field, both of them? So I think yeah. at this point – I think the Phillies have that good of a lineup where that's that's just straight scary. And I think in a just an ugly, ugly dogfight for the season, I think they're going to squeak one out. So there you go, all Phillies. Because yeah, we're gonna not be, biased. It's going to be a bloody war. Well, this is, this is the thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. <laughs> you, you hear, I'm brutally honest. About my team. <laughs> yes, because and nobody hates Phillies more than the Phillies fans. Like all the, the hype, <laughs> all the all the hype since Bryce Harper got signed. This has nothing to do with Bryce Harper, but we're gonna we we got these guys, we got these guys, we got these guys. We're gonna contend, blah blah blah. But this is the thing: Bryce Harper got what he wanted. For a whole like two weeks, the mo the highest paid baseball player of all time, and he did it in thirteen years, as opposed to the highest annual that he that most people would want. Mm-hmm. For them to pick up people 
And the only main – there was two two pickups, Wheeler and re-signing JT Realmuto. And he's making 25 uh, – Bryce Harper's making 25 and change a year for them to not add something substantial for him. And now he has – he can get sandwiched between Schwarber and Castellanos. And or you put like Hoskins behind him, Schwarber up front, like and some of the like the young guys at number two or whatever. He has protection. Like Schwarber, weirdest leadoff man in history of baseball. He's just gonna he's he's gonna set a record for number of leadoff home runs, and it'll be fun. <laughs> now shifting gears to the NL Central, Ethan, who do you have? NL Central. Uh, shoot. Hmm. It's between two teams. Um, I'm liking what, with the Universal DH now, what St. Louis just did. Yeah. Bring back Pool Hulse on a one year, $2.5 million deal. I believe he's going to hit. Probably 25, 30 home runs. He doesn't have to worry about playing in the field. His body's going to be fine. All he has to do is rake. And I feel like he's going to get a like rejuvenated energy from being around the St. Louis fans because you know they're going to go freaking ape shit. And his buddy Yachty. Yeah. So I'm thinking between them and the Brewers. The uh, like. Pirates aren't going to do anything. The Reds just – they lost Jesse Winker, Mr. Three, three home runs in a game twice, Castellanos. Like, they have Joey Volvo. And they traded so, Sonny like, Gray, too. Did they? I'm pretty sure. So, like – Their only guy, I think, is uh, uh, that um, – the rookie of the year dude, India. Yeah, well, and they have Joey Votto and, like – It's Joey Votto. Who knows what he's going to – I don't think they'll ever trade him, though. I don't – like – I think he would have got – I think if this was a longer off season where they actually did stuff, I feel like he would have been traded. Like, I could totally see him get traded at the deadline this year if somebody needs a first baseman or a DH. They're like, going to burn, they they're gonna burn the, down Cincinnati if that happens. Like, if they wind up having a team where, like, their first baseman's not great at first base – but, like, yeah. you have a GH now, just put Joey Votto at first and then throw your your uh, home run hitting just plop at first base person. I'm trying to think of where he could go, though. I don't know. At first base. Because but, uh, I, I definitely like agree those... that it's definitely going to be between those two teams. Because I don't think the Cubs are going to really compete much I, either. No, yeah, they unloaded everybody. What do you think, Dave? I mean, I think it's between those two teams, too. I kind of – I guess it's more of a hunch than going off of pure fact, but I still feel like the Brewers have a pretty good shot. I mean, they did well last year. I feel like they've been, like, pretty good for a while now but haven't made, like, a big push. So I feel like maybe this could be their season. And, you know, like we said, a lot of the teams in their division – aren't going to be putting up as much of a fight. So it's not going to be kind of like that, you know, messy battle you're going to see in the East with three really good teams competing. I think it's only going to be the Cardinals that are going to put up a big fight against. And I mean, the Cardinals, they had that really great run at the end of last season. So, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, it's hard to catch lightning in a bottle twice like that, but. You know, I think they also are going to have a pretty good shot. So it's going to be pretty close between those two. I think the big – because, like, I could see the Brewers taking it if uh, Yelich comes back, like, full force because I don't feel like they really had him did, well, last did year. Did you see that he's number 100 on the top 100 players? He's one. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> wow. Three years ago, where, where was he? Like, top 20? Yeah, easy. He had a crap year. 
Other oh, like on top of being hurt. But... Yeah, because I had him on my fantasy team. I know. <laughs> um, oh yeah, when's that start? <laughs> I forget. Draft in two days. Um, but I'm going the Cardinals, and I feel like the real Cardinals team is that team that won all those games at the end of the season. I think they really finally clicked. And it's hard to argue against Nolan Aronado. Uh, Ro- Nolan Aronado. Uh, oh Aronado. <laughs> <Arenado. laughs> yes, that person. Um, and Paul Goldschmidt. Because <laughs> I'm extremely biased. Um, <laughs> Goldie's still America's is that your first baseman. Or is that your Johnson jersey. Huh? Or your Conto jersey. Which one? <laughs> I'm wearing my Conto jersey. Okay. Um. Uh, still, I'm still butthurt about that. <laughs> that they got, they won't keep Goldschmidt. Um, but I think, and especially with like, especially with pool holes, I think that's really interesting because I even picked the Cardinals before that happened today. I, I think, think that would be interesting. Fire. Hmm? That's gonna light a fire under their asses. I'm like, because dude, they got their franchise guy. Yeah, I think I do think the Cardinals are gonna take this one. And they won't have to, they won't have to fight as hard as they did last year, which they literally had to win like ridiculous amount of games to even make the playoffs as that wild card team. Now, uh, NL West. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not predicting the Diamondbacks to win because they're going to be in the basement because they suck. With a seventy-five million dollar contract. Marte is not going to be with the Diamondbacks long term. <laughs> Before that contract's that. up, he's getting traded. I don't, uh, I don't understand that. But, but uh, Ethan, who you have for the NL West? Well, I had the Padres until Machado and um, Fernando Tatis. Yeah. Can't stay off his motorcycle. Dumbass. But if that doesn't, if that's like a, like a month, maybe a month and a half out of the season, he's going to get his numbers. And then he's got Voight. Like that dude hits freaking bombs. Dude's a beast. Yeah. He's just built like a damn tank. Legitimately. That dude looks like a linebacker. And yeah, I feel like, that lineup's stupid with what they have. And I don't see the Do- – like, the Dodgers, Cody Bellinger is going to have another ass year. Like, I think his, like, MVP status is no longer relevant. I don't think – I think that was, uh, like, a lot of the the stars today, they, like, fizzle out after, like, a handful of years. And – I feel like ever since the Dodgers have been since like 08 and 09 when they got spanked by the Phillies, they've been in the playoffs. Yeah, I know. Almost every year, if not every year, since 08. This is not going to be the year that even though um, – what's his name? The head coach thinks they're going to win in 2022. It's not going to happen. I don't even think they're going to win the division. I think they're going to come in third behind the uh, Padres, Giants, and the, and the Dodgers because I'm not on that hug train. And then <laughs> way back, the Rockies and the Diamondbacks. Yeah, the dump. The, mm, we'll, we'll talk about acquisitions later. Yeah, we will. Um, Dave, what do you think? Well, I think I'm still going to go with the Dodgers. I know that. Um, and I mean, for one thing, they're kind of like the Phillies in that they're bloating their payroll. They're a team that's not afraid to spend money, I'd say. So I think, you know, come the trade deadline, they're not going to be afraid to, you know, make any deals to make a push. You know, even if they're, like, floundering a little bit, I don't think they're the type of team that's going to give up what, no. as long as they're still in the race. So, you know, obviously they signed Freeman, which was a pretty big deal. And, you know, they don't always make a deep 
push into the postseason. You know, I, I think they have what it takes to win division. I'm not saying that they're going to make like make it to the World Series necessarily, but I still think that they have the pieces there. And even if they don't, they're going to push really hard to win the division, even if they fizzle out after the regular season ends. Yeah, I uh, I learned the hard way not to bet against the Dodgers, especially in the past 10 years. So I do think the Dodgers are going to squeak this one out. Uh, I think it's I think it's going to be close. I don't think they're running away with this, especially after the Giants won with the ridiculous amount of wins that they had last season. And I don't know. I I'm not a Padre believer until I actually see them win. Because last year was a big disappointment, like big disappointment. But like they have a ridiculous amount of talent. They're probably the most talented team in the division. It'll be interesting to see if they actually do it. But I'm not going to bet against the Dodgers at this point. And uh, F the Dodgers. So there you go. <laughs> so <laughs> as a very sore loser Diamondbacks fan who's just, you know, chilling out in the basement. Well, you know um, how much it takes me to say that the Giants are even going to do anything and not, well, I didn't like, you know, I didn't like the Giants to begin with just because I don't, (laughs) but Gabe Kapler, man, he did not get those hundred and what three. I think they got, I think the Dodgers had like 103 wins. (laughs) Like the Giants were ridiculous. Yeah. um, He didn't win those games. Yeah. Now this, I think this is going to be interesting. AL East. Who do you have, Ethan? Tampa. Another team it's hard to bet against. <laughs> we all know who's going to be. I, I will tell you, though, I feel like with the young young talent, the Orioles are – like, they'll, sh- they'll, they'll probably shock people with how much they actually win, but they're not going to, unfortunately – because that's another team you obviously know that, like, I love watching. But they're still probably going to be the bottom of that division until those guys develop. But I feel like Tampa, Tampa's, like, sneaky. Like, sneaky good. It's not like the Yankees are like, oh, yeah, duh. Yeah. <laughs> or, like, what Boston became after, what, Oh, 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 four. Yep. I think ever since and, oh, like, four, it's yeah. been like. Now you know what mm-hmm. they're about. Like, oh, four was like, oh, eight Phillies. Like, like they were sneaky freaking good. So, we all know what Boston's about. We all know what the Yankees are about. But somehow Tampa <laughs> is just, they don't even have too many, like, big guys they're just like really talented and they capitalize when the uh, big money guys falter so who are you talking about the yankees yankees in boston boston (laughs) like the boston fans can never like talk shit on the yankees about spending money i can even say we we can't (laughs) say shit either because after the phillies won in 08 they started just like, let's be the Yankees, let's buy some people. And you know how that happened. Hey, Dimebacks would do it too if they had money. If they had money. <laughs> oh, you want to talk about money real quick? <laughs> Did you see MLB memes on Instagram? Money spent in this year's free agency. Number one, <laughs> the Rangers, $580 million. Yeah, that uh, Seager contract's nuts. Although, like, Dodgers are just under half of that. This, we all know, was going to happen. And then Mets number three at 358. I mean, 258. (laughs) But the bottom here, this is why, like, the NL Central, the Reds have nobody. (laughs) 5.5 million. Then the Guardian spent 900K. You know what the Orioles, uh, the Athletics spent? Nothing. Zero, zero dollars. 
That's money ball for you. Yeah, exactly. And it's all about those analytics. <laughs> we'll win on the computer. They find a way somehow. Yep. That, that was big, them getting up Olsen, though. It's very interesting. They definitely got some. They unloaded quite a bit. Yep. Dave, who you got? AL East. I'm actually going to go with Toronto. I think from what I saw from them last year, they have a pretty good young core of guys that look like they're only going to get better with time. You know, they've got people like Vlad and Bo Bichette, and they had a that pretty good push towards the end of last season. And, you know, I do think, again, it's going to be a mix of probably maybe even four different teams in the East that are going to be putting up a fight. Um, you know, the Yankees and the Rays, uh, the Yankees and Red Sox always seem to make a lot of noise. Of course, the Rays somehow always seem to be relevant. You know, they, they're not known for being like a big spender, but they seem to make like a lot of smart decisions with their team to uh, keep them sustainable throughout the season. But in the end, I'm going with Toronto. (laughs) Yeah, you don't burn out out one pitcher by Ryan them all year. (laughs) I don't believe in that, though. You know what's funny, Dave? I also had Toronto. I'm surprised Ethan didn't have Toronto with how much you You want to know why I didn't say Toronto? (laughs) Huh? You want to know why I didn't say Toronto? Why? I forgot about Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> and like half of my fantasy team two years ago was Toronto players. <laughs> Ethan's going to remember Toronto in two days when he's drafting all of them. Um, yep. <laughs> like, I legitimately think with – I know they lost Robbie Ray to Seattle. Who did they pick up or replace him, though? Gossman from the Giants? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So – they basically just traded a, a Cy Young caliber pitcher for a Cy Young caliber pitcher. And, yeah, I just think those players are just going to keep getting better, which is scary. Uh, yeah. This is, hands down, though, the most competitive division because there's going to be four teams actually fighting for the first place, which is nuts. Um, and this is definitely going to be interesting. Honestly, I could see the Yankees kind of falling on their face and landing in fourth. Because we'll get to the Yankees when we're talking about off seasons. Um, this was Boone's last year, one hundred percent. This is Boone's last year. Just watch. The, um, I definitely think Toronto is gonna. This is this is gonna be a wild division. Like yes. wild. It's gonna be. See, the two Easts are the most interesting divisions because the East knows they like they know baseball. Like that's a way of life. You know what I mean? It's it's baseball. All righty. AL Central and why it's definitely going to be the White Sox. Uh, <laughs> Ethan, who do you have for the AL Central? I'm trying to think of all the other teams that are actually in there and why they, like, have no chance. The Guardians, like. What? The, I think the White Sox Indians. had the biggest division win, right? <laughs> like, double um, digits? Mm-hmm. It's. Yeah, the White Sox only got better. Um, who did, who, Minis, did Minnesota pick up people? Because I wasn't really like following anything with Minnesota. I don't think they really did anything. I think they got one of the players that was on Houston. Oh, yeah, they got Carlos Correa. Correa. Yeah, yeah, Correa. yeah, it doesn't matter. He sucks anyway. He doesn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's a waste of money. But, yeah, they don't have – yeah, it's White Sox, Indian – Guardians. Guardians, Twins, Royals. I know we got one more team. There is one more team. Who the hell's the other team? (laughs) It's really sad. Yeah, Um, they suck (laughs) that bad. (laughs) Uh, Shit. I legitimately am blanking. Detroit, oh. Detroit. Oh, oh, yeah, that team. Yeah, so the White Sox, by like 20, 20 games. games. 
but it's not even like a push. (laughs) (laughs) Dave, who do you have? I'm going to have to go with the White Sox, too. I mean, you know, it was just such a big difference between them and any other team in the division this year. I mean, you know, maybe the gap will close. It'd be pretty wild if they win by that big of a margin again. But I don't feel like there's any been like a big enough swing of either them, you know, losing some power or any of the other teams getting better, like nothing big enough that it's going to make a difference. Like, I still think that they're going to be able to run away with the division. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to add anything else. I just had the White Sox. This was the easiest decision. <laughs> it's just like, bam, there you go. Least competitive division. My my friend. That's why Aaron, we do need to get rid of divisions? Uh, my buddy Aaron from Sif Pop is going to be very happy. Uh, he is a White Sox fan. Um, he's also from Iowa. Well, originally from Chicago, lives in Iowa. So makes sense. AL West. I like. I thought this was going to be an easy pick, and then I really had to think about it. But I still wound up thinking it's a relatively easy pick. But Ethan, who do you have for the AL West? Mariners. Ooh, that's a nice pick. Because they came close last they, season. That was a heartbreaker, dude. Mm-hmm. Last game, mm. came down to the freaking wire. That's not happening this year. Because they already they had that confidence. They just picked up Winker. And Robbie Ray. And, yeah, I don't see – I think that was a difference. That, that literally is a difference. Like, one Cy Young caliber pitcher m- would have made that difference. And, like, they wouldn't have gone down to 162. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you got them all there. <laughs> it looks like me when I was four. Yeah, that – oh, that's a good pick. Dave, who do you have? <laughs> I'm actually going to go with Seattle, too. I think, you know, they've made some moves to get better. And, you know, they've had such a long playoff route. I think this team and this fandom, you know, they really want to win now. You can see that in the moves they're making. You could see from just how passionate the fans were getting when they did that push at the end of last season. I think as long as they stay relevant up to the trade deadline, this team's going to be buying and trying to stay competitive all the way up to the end of the season oh well i'm not going to change mine but you're both not wrong i like legitimately i'm like oh it's houston right but like i don't know they i feel like houston's still gonna wind up winning this division but it's definitely not gonna be easy and i definitely don't think they're going anywhere past uh the first round of the playoffs but I'm still going to go with the um, boring pick of picking Houston. I think they're now, three for me. Now, who is going to go to the World Series and who's going to win? Hold on one second. Adobe's trying to be a butthole. Remind <laughs> me later. What's going – get out of here. Stupid Adobe. I do not want to install anything. Leave me alone. No up. You don't like PDFs around here. <laughs> Um, so who's going to the World Series and who's winning, Ethan? All right. If all things go right in this world, I have your NL team. Um. <clears throat> I think it's going to be a rematch of the 1993 World Series. But we don't have Mitch Williams to blow it. So, (laughs) um, yeah. Okay. Toronto. Because how many – like, you get 12 in each division, in uh, each league, right? I get it. It's going to be six in each, right? Oh, six in each. So, yeah. Yeah. You got them going in as a wild card and going through it. Or, no, the top two. So, yeah, 
That's what I f- I feel like they're going to get in the playoffs and blow through people. And then the Phillies are going to – they're probably going to go and have to make long series. But I feel like that's – if all their pitchers go well, then – they can. They have four solid ass pitchers that they can get through. Definitely a three game series, and then when it gets a four game series, they have their four guys. Mm-hmm. So, World Series nineteen ninety three rematch, and uh, yeah, Phillies win this time. How about you, Dave? It's a pretty good pick. You know, I definitely like to see the Phillies make it again. I think. Um, but, you know, for them to make it, I think it's going to boil down to a lot of things going right this season. I know, um, you know, it kind of reminds me back to when they suddenly started, you know, making a lot of noise, 2007. Mm. So, you know, I feel like even if they don't make it this season, you know, as if things start falling into place this season like they expect it to, and they just kind of figure out, you know, where they need to make improvements, make some changes. You know, they could very well be competitive up to that point, even if they have to wait another year or two. But I definitely did have uh, Toronto as well. It's my AL pick. And NL, I was leaning, at least for this season, towards someone out of the NL West is what I'm feeling, as much as I would like to be the Phillies. But, you know, the Dodgers, I feel like they're – hit or miss, I feel like either they go really deep or they get knocked out right away. But um, maybe even the Giants could do something, you know, as much as I hesitate to say that because Gabe Kapler, (laughs) I I feel like they did a really impressive turnaround going from basically a 500 team the year before, like, like the Phillies, to having you know, this juggernaut that they put together. So I feel like, you know, they could make a uh, similar push this season and, you know, learning what they did from last year and capitalizing, they might have a good shot of making it. I'm all, all of us went with the Blue Jays. (laughs) (laughs) I think the Blue Jays are going to beat the Dodgers in the World Series. I think this is going to be the Dodgers' last go-around in the World Series. And uh, Toronto is going to be like, we're the team now. And because, like, that talent huh, and that well, young talent. Scary. One of the most scary, scary – it's like the scariest lineup I've ever seen. Yeah, I, I think the – no matter how much the Dodgers fan – like, it's going to come to an end. It, they've been in that position for 10 years now, and I hate it. Uh, but like I feel like this might be it but like it's not a confident pick of the Dodgers like if it was the past couple of seasons it would have been a much more confident pick um but if we get Dodgers Houston again in the World Series I'm gonna vomit (laughs) yeah I don't I don't know if I'm gonna be watching that one screw that (laughs) let's go play the World Series in the backyard with the kids yeah (laughs) All righty. So getting to the picks and some other kinds of things, who, which acquisition do you think was the biggest move of the off season or at least so far? So Ethan, who do you think is the biggest move? Try not to be biased here. And I, 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 I want to clarify I single biggest move. Huh? So, like, single biggest move. Okay, so not, like, make or break a team, just, like, holy so shit. So not, like, collectively, because we're <laughs> going to get there in a second. I just think, who is the best pickup for a team? Freaking Matt uh, Scherzer. Like, I feel like that's – it's so obvious, but come on. Like, this dude has been on fire for the past freaking decade. Like, he's always in the Cy Young hunt. And, of course, Dirty Mets had to go and pick him up, but it's not going to change anything. Still the Mets, and they're sloppy, and 
have fun. <laughs> Dave, who do you think was the biggest pickup? For me, it was the Braves picking up Olsen. I think that made a lot of noise and showed that, you know, they're ready to uh, commit to being a relevant team for a long time. You know, obviously, a lot of people and fans wanted to see Freddie come back. And it was a big shock to a lot of people that they went ahead with that move instead. But, you know, from a business perspective, I think it made a lot of sense for the Braves to do that. You know, he's a quality first baseman and he's younger. And, you know, now they have him on this deal for a long time. And I think, you know, he's going to be a cornerstone of that team for years to come. And it's interesting because my biggest pick is Freddie Friedman, because I don't think the Dodgers would be competing if they didn't get him. I think like, and that's some, that's saying something, you go out and get the guy that helped win the world series last year. And just like, huh, mine now, which apparently as Ethan shared earlier today, apparently let, that is exactly what the you. Dodgers do. Let me, I, I have, I have, I don't have notes, but I have screenshots and our conversations, but I'm going to go into that real quick. Because that's worth sharing. That this is pretty eye opening. That was on this, right? Or did I like tag y'all in it? I think that was in our chat. Why can't I see that? Or did you just send it to me? Did I just tag you? I legitimately I thought I it was in our that. group chat. So did I. I think I tagged it. Well, that's going to be harder to find. I will I will find it in like two seconds. What is it? All my Instagram is just a bunch of movie stuff. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe that wasn't I thought you liked something that I like I should actually showed you I thought I replied on it that you shared it was that today or yesterday I think it was yesterday What the hell, Instagram? The Graham Graham done messed up. Uh, Dodgers stealing World Series players. But anyway, just in general, the Dodgers have picked up basically team wins World Series. Dodgers get their best player. Was it did it start with like Mookie Betts? Yep. They got Mookie Betts. Uh but yeah, in general, we won't <coughs> just hang on that. But like, yeah, they just go out and get other people's best players. After they yeah, win the World it was Mookie Betts, Scherzer. Turner, and then they got Freeman. Yep. Like, the last three teams that they lost to in the playoffs or World Series, they got the guys that put the nail in their coffin. Yep. Is now what happened. What's the worst move from the offseason? Chris Bryant. I agree. Yep. Because <laughs> it literally makes no sense at all what a waste like like why why would you why would you make that deal like why chris chris bryant why did you want to go to the rockies and rockies why did you spend 50 million dollars getting rid of nolan arenado and just picking up chris bryant instead you literally just like swapped plus gave money for somebody who's not as good. And this is why I do not trust the Rockies to be competing anytime soon. 
because they dumb. That holiday was still out, just so you know, in those in those seven. Jesus. So we all do we all agree that it's Chris Bryant? Okay. Yes. Then we'll move on. Who do you think? <laughs> Not because of his has- talent. Not because of his talent. But how much? It may, literally made no sense. Yeah, it's None. just a bad business decision. <laughs> bad. It's really horrible. It's like, oh, I just got a stimulus check. <laughs> what the hell did you do? Chuck it out the window. Oh my god! Which team had the best off season? Bias as shit, but not really. This is what the Phillies needed. Period. Somebody, not just somebody, multiple hitters that can hit bombs that can protect Bryce Harper. Period. And they're not going to be able to intentionally walk this dude or throw curveballs in the dirt till the freaking cows come home. Like they have to pitch to this guy. Period. So, Dave. Well, I'm going to have to go with the Phillies. Again, biased, but at the same time, I feel like it's a legitimate choice. You know, they they're playing to their strengths, honestly. You know, they're stacking their lineup with really good hitters, you know, they're, they're deep enough now that, you know, you can't just go, oh, I'll just pitch around Bryce Harper and take the next guy up. You can't do that anymore. And, you know, they play in Citizens Bank Park. It's a very hitter-friendly park. They're going to hit a lot of home runs. And, you know, they're still going to have issues on defense, especially, you know, a couple of bats they added aren't known for their fielding ability. Well, at least again, only one of them has to play in the field. <laughs> right. The DH he helps. that bad, was he? Castellanos? What's that? I feel like he's a lot better. I would assume he's a lot better in the field than Schwarber is. So That's, that's what it. I would have thought. You know, he's going to be in left field. So it's going to be better than when Hoskins was out there. Oh, yeah. And more mobile than, like, I love Kutch, but he's more mobile than he is. Well, let's be real here. We all grew up with Pat Burrell in left field, so I don't think the Phillies are. He was an assist him. machine. Okay, Pat Burrell was an assist machine. He, yeah, maybe he couldn't track shit down, but he was going to throw you out. Fair, <laughs> like <laughs> so. At the bat. That's why they called him the bat, not the glove. <laughs> I also put the Phillies, and I think we're sleeping a bit on Brad Hand. I think that was a big pickup because they seriously needed a bullpen because their bullpen is trash. This is a thing, though. They've gotten guys that had, like, minuscule ERAs, okay, yeah, but- that ha- that did well for, like, a couple of years. And then they had an inflated ego, I- ego, ERA, <laughs> when they went to the Phillies. It's every freaking year, and it pisses me off. I think the biggest the difference, are, they- though, is that I think Brad Hand's been more than a few years. Like, I do think he is one of the best relievers in baseball. Um, like, Ian Kennedy, like, Ian Kennedy was riding a high on that that season. And yeah. then he shows up in I don't Florida understand and- that whole thing to begin with. Gibson's a different story. Like, you can have a 3-5 to, like, 3-7-5 ERA as a starting pitcher. But when you get over that in the bullpen, it's not going to work. To be fair, Ian Kennedy didn't have that until he got to the Phillies. No, that's what exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm saying. Like this is they got Canable too. That's yep. they're gonna that's that's gonna be their closer. Mm-hmm. Is what they're saying. So, I think the Phillies really put up a, a great off season. Obviously, the Texas Rangers put up a lot. I think the Mets just in, general, million worth. <laughs> in a vacuum, I think the Mets had an amazing offseason. It just I it's so crazy because of the lockout. I completely forgot Scherzer even went to the Mets. And I did. I, 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 the, I'm like, oh wait a minute, that happened. Um, who had the worst offseason as a team? Like move wise or lack thereof. I think for the context of the team, I feel like this team has to be a contender and then didn't do shit. (laughs) 
I mean, real quick. I need to look at that breakdown. Dave, do you have an idea? Honestly, the first thing team that came to mind for me was the Reds. Damn it. Really- <laughs> <laughs> You're going. <laughs> I only say that because it's kind of a head scratcher to me that they were selling off a lot of the really good pieces right at the start of the season. Like, yeah, I could understand if they felt like they had no shot, like they were so far out of it that they couldn't compete. But, you know, I feel like they were pretty relevant, you know, even like a couple of years ago. And they still have those pieces in place where if they made a couple moves, they could really, you know, make a push. So I don't know. For me, it just – didn't make a lot of sense. Like if, you know, maybe if they played into the season, got close to the deadline, saw they weren't going to do anything and decided they wanted to to go into sell mode, I could understand it a little more. The timing of the whole thing is weird to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I don't get it. I really don't. (laughs) But I feel like... um, The, the the athletics have been like they, they're they, contender they, and they no did, matter what yeah like, it's a like, problem they literally spent nothing zero dollars <laughs> they got rid of people that's what they did this year why because that's only one ball. person knows why though Billy Bean and the data machine okay. Watch him do something still. He's like, we don't need this. We don't need this. All this money. For me, 100% no-brainer, the Yankees. Like, the best they could do was keeping Rizzo, and that's it. That was mm. – <laughs> they re-signed him, but didn't go after Freddie Freeman harder. What? Well, they, apparently they did, and he didn't want to go. Oh, he just didn't want to go. Yeah, well, who well, who does? But <laughs> that's I would take Voight over him, over Rizzo, period. Like, I just feel like the Yankees didn't do anything. And that is what the only thing they did, right? Like, yeah, it f- I felt like that was the only thing they did. And that's basically like, oh my God, let's claw on to the one thing that we do have that we don't want to lose. But like, they could have lost him. He didn't do anything. But like, Where's the Yankees going after pitching? Like, it's not like they have a great pitching staff. No. They're an offensive team, period. That's what they have been in for quite some time. They, I just feel like they, of all people who have the money, didn't do anything. So I feel like they had the worst offseason because, you know, Boston, Tampa, and Toronto are all coming at them. And they could easily be in fourth place. Yeah. And they didn't do anything to try to dig themselves out of that. So for me, it was that, definitely that was a good one. <laughs> huh? That was a good one. <laughs> they re- like it made me think, like, yeah, they really did nothing. They actually hurt themselves. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's why reason. I think they're gonna come in fourth place. I would love to see it. Now, which <laughs> team do you think will overachieve the most this season? The Orioles. They have nothing to lose. They have a bunch of really good young talent. Are they going to make a push for anything? No. But they're going to win games. They're not going to win lose... 100 games. Eight, like, what? Freaking 18 in a row? Double-digit losing streaks multiple times in a season. I don't think that's going to happen this year because the young guys like the like Ryan Moncastle has another year on, under his belt. They have Cedric Mullins back after his surgery, and he looks like he's doing still pretty damn good. Um, Trey Mancini is just one of their staples. That's always going to be there. And then they really do. They have, like, a bunch of really young guys. And then some, like, I don't, like, I feel bad saying it like this, but, like, thrift store veterans that, you know, can get shit done. Like, they can teach the the young guys even more. 
So I feel like they 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 have a chance though. Like it, they would have a lot better chance of pushing to like a 500 record if they weren't in that damn division. That's because tough. They have to play those guys way too much. And they just – they don't stack up. They might, like, steal a few series – like, a few series here and there, but out of that division. But when they're playing the Central, they're not going to have too much of a problem. Like, they'll win games, just not in their division. How about you, Dave? Who do you think is going to overachieve? I think it's going to have to be one of those teams that's – there's got to be at least one team that becomes relevant in the AL Central. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Who did you think? Uh, my first choice I was leaning towards was the Twins. I feel like they're trying to become a little more relevant. And if I, if it wasn't them, I'd probably go with Detroit. I picked Kansas City. They picked up Zach Greinke. <laughs> Who, like, legitimately, like, back in Kansas City, I think he could actually do a solid job this season, not getting paid over $30 million <laughs> a year. I'm not upset about that contract. Uh, but, like, I think it might be the Royals. I think at a it has to be somebody from the AL Central. All four of them can't be that ass the whole <laughs> season. So I feel like Kansas City might do it. Why not? Who's going to underachieve the most this season based off of pure talent? I can't. Oh, I know what your answer is going to be based off of what you said about free agency, but the freaking Dodgers. Okay. They are not going to get that triple digit win. They're probably going to be in third place. If they wind up in third place, I would consider that underachieving for them. I feel like even not them not getting in the playoffs is underachieving, but I think they're legitimately going to be in third place. How about you, Dave? I think I'm going to go with Houston. I feel like for a while now, they've been like, you just assume that they're going to win every time. But I, I feel like, you know, this could be the time where they might not win the division or if they make it to the postseason, they're not going to go as deep. You know, we, it seems like they've been making it to the championship series over and over again. And I, I don't feel like they're at the point where they can sustain that anymore. Yeah, and they just lost Correa, too. Like, yep. people still are talking about them, though. Makes no sense. But. Mets. <laughs> Is it? You have All a right. bet. Well, it's a New York team, just not the one I thought you were going to say. <laughs> No, I legitimately think it's going to be the Mets. They legitimately have the best one-two punch pitchers in the in baseball, and they're still not going to do anything. I'm sorry. All right, I think we need to stop picking on the Mets because you, I, I don't want that like reverse karma coming back and those assholes doing something. <laughs> no, we'll stop. I'll leave it at that. You just about picked up Max Scherzer. You have Jason uh, Jacob Degrom, and you're still not going to do anything you know who we didn't even mention who's perennial underachievers angels well it's per like perennial for a reason <laughs> they need oh my god on the did field you, did you see that savage tweet about mike trout so happy about noah syndergaard being on the team so he won't be alone on the il yep yeah. Oh, awkward. Uh, if Mike Trout stays healthy and Syndergaard stays healthy, be interesting. But look at this, though. Like, when you you look at Mike Trout, if he stays healthy and he's playing right alongside Shohei Otani, they have Otani and Syndergaard maybe. Like, just think about, like, at his peak, if he's, like, 80% of that. <clears throat> they can do something. What team's Matt's on? Is he still a Met? I 
don't I remember. Know. I feel like he might have went to it. I don't remember. But because, like, the Mets had what at that one point Harvey, DeGrom, Syndergaard, Mats, um, Strowman. Strowman went to Texas, right? What did it come? Uh, was it Texas? Trying to remember. Obviously, they spent a lot of money. <laughs> AL West, I think, could be the most surprising division. Could be surprisingly interesting. Um, but wow, wow, wow. time to go into some fun facts. So I have a couple of fun facts, and I want you both to try to guess. Who is the heaviest starting player in baseball? Today? Yep. The heaviest. Mm. I got these all off of Google, so if they're not accurate, we can blame Google. I'm trying to, like, scan the teams. This one might surprise you. The heaviest. It's a tough one. If we were talking like years ago, there were like quite a few guys. <laughs> like, like I would Carlo guess. Malone or like CC Sabathia. Yeah. <laughs> so here's a hint. This player is 282 pounds. 282. I'm trying to think if it's all just because of muscle. Giancarlo Stanton. Close. Judge. <laughs> Aaron okay. Judge is wow. 282 pounds of just muscle. Jeez. Freakish. <laughs> That's – what? Would not have I, guessed I that. thought it had to be the, one of those two, but I'm like oh. – But I know – like, I was thinking maybe 256. Like, No, he's 282 pounds. Crazy. Um, oldest player. Hint, we talked about them already today. Isn't, that, isn't it Albert? Mm-hmm. It is? Yep, Albert Poole. And he faked his birth certificate, too, so he's even older. <laughs> How old is he now? Old. I think it was like 41, 42. Wow. That's it? Oh, yeah, he came. Like, wait, how? He's been playing since he was young, 2001. So he was like 21. Who has the most losses out of any current pitcher? Balls. Also talked about today on the show. Mm. Gotta be someone who's been playing. And also somebody who just recently had a homecoming, like Albert Pujols. Zach Greinke. Yep. Zach Greinke has the most losses out of any active pitcher in baseball. But I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, he still had like 80 more wins than losses. Well, he went to the Diamondbacks. So, I mean. Um, What record did the 2021 Rockies break? Two thousand twenty-one Rockies, and let's just say this is strikeouts. not a good record strikeouts. break. Strikeouts, not strikeouts. Most home runs surrendered. It, no, it is the worst home away differential in the history of baseball. Really, like run differential, win differential. Yeah. They had the most comparatively most wins versus the most losses <laughs> from home to away in the history of baseball. That's insane. Thanks, Coors Field. Yep, that'll do it. So terrible. Diamondbacks had one of the worst away records in the history of baseball this season. <sighs> yeah. 
I they're still my team though. They're like a cabbage patch kid. <laughs> they're like ugly, but you still love them. Do either of you have any fun facts? I have something interesting. Okay. So this is some Ivy League college action. Okay. Okay. Jake Gary with a four four home run game, including two grand slams. He also had eleven RBIs against Princeton. This Damn. is Yale playing Princeton. Wow. Who who's he play for? Yale? Yale. This dude murked Princeton. Dang. By himself. That's a lot of runs. <laughs> and then this is this is probably one of the craziest things I've ever seen in baseball. Kurt Wilson stole home to win the game for Texas Tech last night. This was a couple of days ago. Today he hit a walk off Grand Slam. He could steal home and hit Grand Slam. Yeah. Good for that guy. <laughs> He's impressive. He, a walk off steal of home, and then the day after. He hits a walk-off grand slam. Dang. Do you have any, Dave? Um, one thing I just kind of forgot about until this week, I think would just be an interesting mention considering we're talking baseball, is next week the newest version of MLB The Show comes out. I pre-ordered it. <laughs> <laughs> and for the first time ever, it will be on a Nintendo console. What? Also true. And the cover athlete is Shohei Otani. They made a really cool for the collector's edition one. Yeah, the art looked amazing. I thought you were going to give me a heart attack, Dave. Like, what? <laughs> I thought Dave was going to give me a heart attack and tell me that it's the latest edition of MVP baseball. And I was going <laughs> to lose my shit. <laughs> I wish. That would be incredible. MVP Baseball 2005, the greatest sports game in the history of video games. Bam. Mic drop. Goodbye. <laughs> if, only, if only, like, they can literally make that game today, but with better graphics. Yeah, yeah don't they, change it. They can just bring that exactly.